Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on our next webinar. So we have Wednesday, it's three o'clock Polish time, and we are welcoming you today for our Mark and Cyril uh, extract webinar. We have our main presenter, Arto Savunen, who is with us, and Arto will tell you some more, more details about the Mark extracts which we are producing. And you can also see Raimo, which you already know, and Raimo will support us today also during our question and answer session. Some technical details before we start. Uh, as many of you know, we will run the webinar for around 25 minutes. And after that, we will start our question and answer session. If you will have any questions, please write them during the webinar uh, in the chat window. You can find the window on the lower right corner, so definitely you know it. But for all the people who are first time with us, I just want to inform you. We will try to finish the whole meeting within an hour. But if you will, of course, have more questions to ask, we will not uh, uh, try to, to, to quit the webinar before. We are always trying to answer all your questions, so you will be good informed. Okay, right now I will also introduce Arto. Arto is a manager at Viking Malt representing malt cereal extracts. He's a beverage professional with almost 20 years work experience in supply chain, new product development and commercial roles. Arto is passionate about great tasting beverage, beverages and finding best ways of delivering this for consumers. Arto, the time's yours, so the presentation starts right now. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here uh, with you uh, today in this topic. As uh, mentioned, uh, we are talking about malt and cereal extracts uh, for brewing. As a starter, I want to explain to you that uh, 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 next to uh, in the same uh, group with uh, with Viking Malt, uh, who is producing uh, malts, uh, there is a Sensen company that is uh, producing malt and cereal extracts uh, uh, in the same site uh, in Lahti, Finland, uh, that we produce malts. We belong to the same group. Uh, Baltimo is the name. Uh, we have a strong heritage in natural processing of cereals uh, going back to 19th century. We do cooperation and sharing of know-how and expertise in the group. And uh, sense on ingredients uh, for extracts uh, are delivered by uh, Viking Malt. That allows us to have a uh, perfect uh, traceability from field all the way to the packaged product. As uh, Viking Malt has a specialty in uh, 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 high diastatic power uh, malts, so has Senson uh, a specialty product uh, uh, in natural malt beta amylase uh, enzyme preparation. This has been produced since the uh, beginning of the malt uh, uh, and extract uh, uh, production going back uh, uh, to uh, 40 years uh, time. The process itself, how the malt and cereal extracts are pro uh, uh, produced, uh, we can see in the picture. Uh, it reminds a lot about the brewing process and actually the first part all the way till filtering is the same as most of you guys have in, uh, in your workplace. Then uh, the next step, evaporation, that actually replaces uh, our kettle uh, and allows us to concentrate the wort produced in the filtering uh, uh, step. Uh, and then we go to packaging and delivery. To divide the process in two, we can talk about the brew house first. So the raw material intake is typically malts, cereals and water. Depending on the type of uh, extract produced, we have 100% pure named extract or a mix of different malts uh, and cereals. We, uh, have, we are using our own uh, barley malt enzyme for the processing 
and for some specialties we also use commercial additional enzymes. After filtering, the product can be called Ward. It could be sold as such uh, for our customers, but of course, due to high content of water, the cost of transportation would be uh, rather high. And as it is ideal matrix for yeast and mold and bacterial growth, uh, it is vulnerable natural product. Due to that, uh, we can go step with, uh, further in our process and we can talk about evaporation and packaging. Evaporation we do in a low pressure and medium temperature to concentrate the wort. It allows us to have a, a lower water activity level, uh, increase the viscosity and have an overall improved stability. Uh, then next step is the packaging that allows us to improve again stability if required, have easy handling of the product and of course according to the customer requirements uh, we have a, uh, we have the possibility to have find the best uh, packaging uh, size and uh, and uh, and form for our customers. Storing. Uh, as well as transportation uh, the, is recommended to have uh, in even temperature below 20. Uh, to have the best uh, uh, stability for the product, the main uh, word here is even temperature. So big variations in the temp temperature are the worst for, 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 for uh, typical uh, uh, extracts. Then uh, once the product is produced, uh, it is of course produced according to the specification and with all the extracts uh, produced, of course there is a product data sheet that is given to all the customers looking for right kind type of product uh, for their uh, applications. As you are familiar with uh, Viking Malt's Pilsner Malt and the specification shared with it, uh, on the left side you can see it and on the right side you have the specification for our light uh, malt extract which is produced out of Pilsner malt. Uh, you can actually see that many of the, uh, the figures in the, in the specifications are the same. You have the dry matter, you have the color, you have the diastatic activity there, free amino uh, nitrogen values and beta glucanase values for, a, for example. As the product is a liquid form as uh, and as I mentioned earlier we have uh, uh, it's very vulnerable for the microbial growth uh, uh, so we have target values uh, on, on the micro levels uh, which can be seen in the, in, the, in the specifications and of course we are below those once the product is delivered and, uh, and uh, stay below those uh, until the best before once the product is stored in the recommended uh, 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 temperatures and, 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 and storing places. Due to this product is sometimes also used as such without fermentation, uh, we have also nutritional uh, information given in the, in the specification. That allows if, for example, you are producing a non-alcoholic beer to calculate how much addition of this extract actually will deliver to the end product uh, if you need to calculate energy or sugar levels or, or, or things like that, that that are required from the food stuff. What comes to different types of uh, malt and cereal extract that are produced? We have of course malt extracts, which is the the main uh, focus area on the on the on the on the commercial side typically. Then uh, in our portfolio, we have in addition cereal extracts, we have special extracts uh, and these we will go to uh, one by one uh, in the next slides. On the down below, you can see uh, in the picture uh, how these uh, different extracts uh, have different color shades uh, when they are diluted. These are about 10% uh, 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 dilutions of the extracts. Uh, when you typically get an extract uh, in your lab, they all look almost the same 
black, uh, uh, very viscous uh, products. But when we do the dilutions, then you start to see the differences. And here is a one good example of, of the variations that are available. Let's talk about malt extracts. Uh, malt extracts can be divided in, uh, in by their color uh, to light caramel extracts and black extracts. As the, the name already indicates, also the raw materials can be almost guessed here, but they are named here. So for light extract, we have Pilsner malt, caramel extract, we have a caramel malt, and also for processability, some Pilsner malt included, and then for black extract, of course, black malt. Uh, caramel extract is uh, kind of interesting in a way that they can, of course, be produced in uh, using this mix mentioned here, but then there's other uh, possibility as well to use only Pilsner malt, uh, and then in the later phase of the process, use uh, high temperature, high pressure that allows to caramelize the, the sugars that have been extracted from the Pilsner malt. And this way we will have the similar flavor profiles as by using caramel malts. Let's talk about the light extract here. Uh, flavor, light, flavored extract with color similar to pale ale. Uh, where is it used? It's for gravity adjustment. It can deliver fermentable sugars and body. It can be used as a base extract for malt-based beers. All, in, uh, all this can be uh, seen as a, a possibility to have a process optimization. It has a dry, uh, high, uh, dry matter, a high dry matter content. It has zero waste uh, due to after you have poured it in, it, it creates no no uh, mash to. Uh, uh, to be rid of, to get it rid of, you have only the the the, the uh, packaging that needs to be recycled. And then for your calculations, you can easily use the dry matter content to calculate how much uh, product you need to have a, a certain plate uh, uh, in the end product. Uh, for caramel, of course, uh, reasons for usage are color and the caramel flavor uh, and some body. For black extract, the typical uh, reasons for uh, usage are uh, color adjustment uh, uh, to be to, to be sure that the uh, end product will be just in your specification. And nowadays, more and more also for specialty beers. With the black extract, you get uh, significant uh, difference even with the small dosages so one uh, out of uh, uh, so even with a few grams you will man manage to get that typical uh, one epc uh, 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 color so these are usually to be used for traditional beers uh, but nowadays with the uh, specialty beers rising uh, these uh, can be used in that category, those categories as well. Then we come to cereal extract. It can be oat, rye, wheat, of course barley would be something to, to mention here. Uh, today uh, I have these three. If these are mixed, so then we get the multigrain version. Uh, the options are, uh, 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 are just a question to have a chat with you and find the uh, perfect uh, proposal for you. Uh, on these, uh, we have uh, we are using non-malted malted cereals, uh, uh, and for uh, wetex uh, product, which is our wheat product, we use small amount of barley malt to have a better processability. And the flavor and color of these is light cereal flavored extract, but it allows you to have that small uh, difference in your end product. You can deliver a uh, cereal of different con uh, cereal concentrations, uh, or actually, you can deliver these uh, to your end product uh, in the uh, in the kettle uh, and have uh, different concentrations uh, that are typically uh, reach uh, in your normal mashing. Uh, and then 
what what are the benefits actually you can act you avoid additional uh, uh, oat grain or rye uh, intake in your in your in your silos and you don't need to adjust your milling to get op optimal uh, extraction of the named cereal uh, very typically uh, these products are also added uh, uh, in the late phase of the of the of the process uh, for wheat you have more uh, uh, things coming out you have you you can read some turbidity with it you can improve foam uh, 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 by adding uh, our wheat extract and uh, of course those uh, flavors that can be, uh, be that are wheat uh, typically seen in the wheat and uh, and tasted with wheat products uh, these products are, are used uh, in growing numbers in low and non alcohol products as well for specialty beers. And as mentioned, the, in, very much in the late uh, process steps of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the production. Then we go to uh, specialty extracts. We have organic extracts, gluten free extracts, and sour extracts. As the name says, organic, organic extracts, they have raw materials that are of, uh, organic. They can be light or black extract, but the, the, the raw material is organic. They can be used as we talked about uh, malt extract and only difference is that uh, the end product can be claimed as organic. For gluten-free extract, we have actually done uh, uh, gluten-free enzymatic treatment for the uh, for the product in our process and it allows you to 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 use it as as typical malt extract uh, so uh, and with this product of course you don't need to do the treatment in your brewery and in that way you actually it allows you to have a, a better process uh, improved uh, process uh, in the in the brewery uh, then we go to sour extract, uh, which is our, one of our latest launches. Uh, it is uh, made of Pilsner malt combined with some barley. Uh, then in the uh, our process, there is uh, lactic acid bacteria fermentation taking place that will deliver nice sourness in uh, that will be combined with the with the malty flavor of the product. This product is typically recommended for sour beers and it can be as well used for pH adjustment of your mash. Uh, for sour beers, uh, you can either use it as an addition on top of your normal word and reach your, uh, make your, uh, your uh, sour beer in this way, or then you can do a kettle souring and in addition to that, during the peak seasons to have a higher volume uh, coming out of the process. The positive side on this is that you don't have lactic acid bacteria activity present in the product anymore. You have just 100% flavor. These products are uh, cr growing uh, and uh, uh, we can see that uh, organic lagers, gluten-free uh, beers, uh, they are taking part in the in the every uh, supermarket uh, 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 beer shelves uh, more and more and the sour extract that's the one of the latest trends uh, rising currently then we i want to say a few words on the our natural malt beta amylase preparation you know already that the the reason why malt is uh, uh, barley malt is actually used in in brewing one of those being a great enzymatic activity at sensor we produce uh, a natural malt beta amylase enzyme uh, it that is uh, coming from malted barley uh, that in that product we have a beta amylase activity and also other uh, hydrolytic enzyme activities uh, can be found it is typically used to increase saccharification power and it is especially uh, used for brews with high amount of adjuncts and when other cereals than barley is used. 
when can the, these products or where at what stage these uh, extracts should be or could be used we have here uh, different steps from the process mashing kettle before filtration after filtration and in then the last part is uh, if you are producing low or non alco segments for mashing of course for ph uh, adjustment you can use sour extract or beta las enzyme those are the places for those reasons to be used uh, then for kettle you can use or all the uh, all the uh, extracts actually of course beta amylase is not there uh, because uh, beta beta enzyme is not there because there's no reason to add it but all the others can be used in the in the kettle and that's where it's it's uh, uh, very often used uh, used then we have a, a filtration uh, depending on what you're looking for uh, uh, it can products can be added before filtration or after filtration we typically recommend to have some kind of uh, uh, filtration uh, even even you add it in the late uh, process but just to secure your product quality uh, uh, there you can we you can use black extract either it is from basic malt black extract or is it gluten free or organic uh, all that is is okay then caramel extract and as well cereal extract for low and non alcohol segment uh, it, it depends a lot uh, how is your process and depending on that we can find the uh, best solutions for you currently our customers are using uh, uh, these uh, uh, extract uh, named here light malt extract caramel extracts black extract cereal extract gluten free and organic but it really depends what kind of process you have if you don't have a brew house at all so it makes a big difference or if you are using your brew house partly or fully to produce that so this is something that we need to have a discussion about and to find the best solutions then as a uh, to, to, to as a summary we start to get to the end part why are we using uh, malt and cereal ex extracts are they delivering competitive edge uh, actually extracts they make it possible to uh, have increased process efficiency especially uh, during the peak seasons uh, you have a possibility to uh, widen your pro product portfolio in some occasions uh, even to the categories that have not been possible for all the breweries before and of course uh, it allows you to secure your product specification for example when you add color uh, uh, to the end product to make sure that it, it, it is just uh, as, as expected by the customer then uh, malt and cereal extract as a summary we have a uh, same ingredients used that uh, are used in every brewer brewery or many of uh, those uh, already just in liquid form there are no ad added ingredients uh, other than uh, than what is named in the in the uh, in the in the specification uh, single or mix of malt and cereal cereals are available and you can do the kettle dosing or you can do the late dosing depending on what, what you are your, what you are looking for it is a lot like if you compare hop uh, adding hops you can add them to 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 kettle or you can do dry hopping for example so it's really similar to do that and uh, then we recommend pasteurization in the end uh, for uh, these uh, uh, when when once you use malt and cereal extracts from sensor portfolio we have been talking about general uh, general type of uh, extract uh, here i have collected some names so you can see what are the names of the of the of the products that uh, we have on the markets uh, 
from Sensor Multi series, it's a uh, Maltax 10, Maltax 800 gold, Maltax 1500F. That's with the different colors. It's uh, 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 you can see described there. Then cereal, it's easy to understand. Pure oat, pure rye, vetex is uh, wheat extract. And then sense on special, uh, you can also understand if it's because it's written in the name, it's gluten free, organic, or sour. Uh, for uh, sense on malt, beta mulas, it's beta uh, product that can be found from the portfolio. Please visit our website for basics and feel free to contact us. Uh, we are happy to help you and uh, find you the best uh, samples to trial. Last uh, time you heard some tips how to select malts. Uh, I can agree with those tips uh, written by Raimo. Uh, but as a summary, what are you looking for from your product? That's of course the first question. Understand the PDS info and do not be afraid to ask for more details. Uh, taste the samples and test them directly to different products. It can be that first it's, it, is, uh, it gives you a picture of being something else, then once it's diluted, it's totally different. Uh, consider the process. Read the PDS, how is the microbiology, How's the extract sugar uh, or dry matter needed? Uh, uh, do you need uh, free amino uh, nitrogen uh, in your product, or, or does it does it have have to be uh, in that high levels uh, in every extract added? Uh, what is the durability uh, of the end product? How is can you do you have a possibility for pasteurization? And if not, what else uh, could be thought? Uh, to uh, make sure that the product is okay when it's leaving you, uh, you. And the ideal package size for the production batch, uh, and th with this I mean your production batch. Once you open the batch, it should be used at once. Uh, that's our recommendation. So most often we find the best packaging also for, for different sizes, but that is something to consider already in the beginning. And in the end, I mean, it is just word. That is what most of our are most familiar with, aren't we? Thank you for the presentation. And now it's time for some questions. Yes, Arto, thank you very much for a very nice presentation. We will start our question and answer session in a moment. But the first question from me as a warm up. So, which product of your portfolio do you think is your favorite or you consider as the most unique? Currently, I, I mean, sour is one of my favorites actually, because we have been uh, working with that for last. Uh, yeah, a year or so and the different opportunities that, that we have with that and the beers that we've been tasting they've all been like something like I've been amazed like how well it works and even with small dosages not making full sour beer but having that pleasant flavor in the uh, end product that that is something that I've been surprised with this extract uh, that's my personal flav favorite. But then when we come to uh, low alcohol products, uh, these rye and oat extract, that those are something that, yeah, I I would like to play more with, but it's not always the case, of course. But uh, but those are maybe the most most interesting ones currently in the portfolio. And they are following the trends right now, the beer mm. trends in, in, in the world, because mm. power beers and the low alcoholic beers are rising right now everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so the first question what we have is how much tons cereals are processed annually in the extract factory? This is really uh, depending on the uh uh depending on the on the on the on the year i mean it it is variating from year to year and that depends on the on the trends so we have a capability uh for for higher volumes but let's say that 
it the big difference here is uh, what type of uh, products we are, are, are producing and nowadays it seems to be like in the brewery that we get uh, uh, small orders of this and that so it is niche products more change overs and and like in the brewery i said so the volumes could be pushed forward in in significant tons uh, but this is uh, uh, currently not the trend to have a maximum amount it is rather to have a specialties going out so yeah that okay thank you very much the next question how big is impact for beer clarity if extract is added after filtration uh, this depends on the product so if you you, you would use uh, a dark uh, dark extract which have uh, lower amounts added and then the clarity turbidity is rather small so then you have a, a less uh, impact on the on the clarity but if you would add uh, let's say uh, uh, basic light uh, light extract in the in the product then you have a significant rise in the in the uh, in the turbidity uh, this really depends so 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 and in the markets we have as well uh, had a, a clear product so that can could be uh, added in this in a, in a higher uh, volumes uh, currently, it's not in the in the in the in the portfolio, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. So, what package sizes do you offer? We have currently 10, 20 liter, 200 liter, 500 liter, and 1000 liter uh, uh, packages. And of course, then for big volumes, we have a uh, uh, bulk uh, uh, bulk uh, possibility. Uh, all of these can be produced packed in in as such uh, unaseptically or then aseptically. So those are the sizes what we offer. And the weights they de depend on. Of course, if you put in two hundred liter, you put. Uh, 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 light extract, it will weight more than, uh, than, than some of the others, so it depends on the gravity as well. Very nice. So, we have a question about sour extract. Using your sour extract to lower pH, reduce the time taken in the usual kettle souring procedure by adding bacteria? Yes, so you can yeah you can actually by add as i mentioned you can <clears throat> do a normal mash in the in the brew house uh, and then add this on top so instead of having uh, a kettle souring and waiting for 24 hours to have that acidity right acidity what you want so you can do a, a uh, just by adding it uh, on top so you can go forward and as well uh, you have some other benefits on that. Raimo, you have actually done uh, our uh, sour beers on this. Would you comment some words on this? Yes, uh, I would say that um, the sour extract, if you use it like I, I, I have a recipe in our, uh, our our recipe book in, in web pages uh, it's not that kind of extreme sour product uh, what some persons might expect but it is clearly sour and uh, by that way it's a it's a good product for a, a big crowd of, of consumers maybe a step in uh, to, a, to a sour product but it's easy easy to do and even to make the first first kettle and you do your own sour kettling and then you can increase and, and make the another one and the souring effect is happening immediately so you actually don't don't lose uh, uh, kettle time for for doing that and if you don't use uh, if you don't have kettle souring really so then you can actually just uh, do uh, Le have a less load on your mashing and then add this one on top so then the uh, filtration times uh, and all that will be shorter already and then you by adding this one you will actually be quite quick uh, forward with the, with this product yeah mm. 
I have to admit that I was trying that beer on the Brau Beviale first in November, and we had this in our booth. The people love that beer. So if anybody of our attendees would like to know how we did that beer, I, I think it was sour bubble Viking mold. Mm. So we can share you the recipe definitely. And Raimo can send you also very nice tips about how to make really nice sour beer. So keep it in mind and we can tell you some more details about the sour. But staying in the sour subject, uh, <coughs> how is the sour extract produced? So we actually produced a wort just like in every brewery uh, and then we do uh, lactic acid bacteria uh, uh, fermentation with it uh, so we have the same process as you do in the kettle uh, souring but we do it uh, in our our process uh, yeah but we can extend that question so it's being produced using sour malt or using bacteria Bacteria, lactic acid bacteria, yeah. Okay, I think we have answered the question right now quite All good. Right. I, I may continue also saying yes. that the sour extract, when you receive it from from Senson, then it's it's inactive, so so the uh, lactic uh, it's stabilized, so mm. lactic acid bacteria doesn't come with the product so it's already done yeah and that's the reason it's uh, it can be used in in many of the breweries that don't want to take in these uh, uh, bacteria and uh, of course i mean that's most of the breweries but uh, but uh, yeah kettle and souring has been the trend nowadays uh, but it's not possible for everybody so this is this allows you to actually extend your product range uh, and as uh, Raimo was saying it's rather uh, it's you're not getting the extreme acidity with this it's rather kind kind of thinking about the consumer and having that that drinkability still in the product great guys I don't see any questions more and I don't see that even somebody is typing anything so we will be finishing our webinar in a moment but maybe mm. like to add something to the end Arto or Raimo yeah I can say a few words so thank you very much for today uh, uh, and I mean it's true conversation uh, that we find the best solutions for you Quite often we get a request for extract uh, and without discussions. Uh, I think being open uh, helps to actually find the most efficient ways to produce the products that you are looking for. So feel free to contact. Uh, it's, uh, we are waiting and uh, of course contacting you uh, anyway. So uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, these chats and uh, look the right, uh, for the right uh, uh, processes and options for you to to for your beers thanks yep hot summer day have a beer stay safe bye <laughs> <laughs> have a nice afternoon and see you next time on the viking world webinars thank you for attending this time with us bye bye. You. yeah bye bye, -bye.